guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I did my favorite to film for you guys. It's no secret, this is the favorite. I tested a whole bunch of brand new makeup in a full face of first impressions. We have a good mix of drugstore and high-end makeup. And let me just say, if I could marry a makeup product, I probably would have married some of these today. If you're interested to see what I have been obsessed with in today's video, make sure to keep on watching. But before we go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel once a week, so you never have to miss me for too long. But yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. I already have the brows filled in and outlined, but I do have a new pot concealer that literally just came in the mail today. Glossier Stretch Concealer, and I have this in the color G5. It claims to have buildable coverage. The only reason I got this is because I went ahead and ordered the Glossier sweatshirt that I am so excited about. It's my first official piece of makeup merch. I think this color is going to be perfect for highlighting underneath my eyebrow. Ooh, this is creamy. The only thing that I've ever tried from Glossier is the mintbalm.com, one of my favorite lip balms of all time. Sometimes if I get too, too close to my brow and I push the product up into my brow, it makes my brows look kind of grayish. I wouldn't say it has full coverage, but it's medium. And it's not super thick. I found that pot concealers tend to be a little bit more thick than your traditional liquid concealer because they are in a pot formula. So they're gonna be a little bit more solid. I didn't expect it to be super full coverage because I know that Glossier is more of a natural, your skin but better type of brand. Probably the creamiest pot concealer I've tried. Since I pushed my product up a little too high, I'm just gonna go back in with my brow pencil real quick and fix it. I used to really only like pot concealers that were like super full coverage. That pot concealer is definitely different in the sense that it's not full coverage and it also really doesn't have a super matte finish but I feel like it actually gave the perfect amount of coverage I think that also the color is perfect so it's giving me that highlighted look and not only that highlighted look but that more clean look it's very subtle I'm somebody that likes very crisp and clean brows I feel like I'm getting that but it's not super bam in your face and it does say that you can build it up but I mean I really don't have anything to conceal I really just like to clean underneath the eyebrows up so it's not like I have a whole bunch of discoloration or anything I will say if I haven't touched my brows in a while and they need to be groomed that is when I would go for something that is more like the NARS Soft Matte Complete or the Too Faced Peach Perfect Full Coverage Concealer because I need something that is going to help conceal all those hairs versus now my brows just got cleaned up so this did exactly what I needed it to do. I quickly went ahead and primed my eyelids. I will leave everything down in the description box that I'm using. This eyeshadow palette has been so hard for me not to touch guys. I've had this in my collection for so long without trying it that they actually just came out with a, another version of this palette. Patrick Top Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. This is the original. They just came out with a more like reddish type of moment. I'm really intrigued because we have these two cream eyeshadows over here and I feel like if I didn't use them, I would not be doing this palette any justice. This also comes with a very nice large mirror. Patrick Ta does not play when it comes to packaging. I'm sorry, but that's one thing that he gets right every single time. Everything I've tried from Patrick Ta has never disappointed. I'm gonna go in with these two shades and just pack those onto my lid. I've never used cream eyeshadow like this. I've used glittery cream eyeshadow. I'm being very intentional with where I'm putting this because I do have hooded eyes. Pigment is definitely there. I don't think that these are going to dry down. To set the colors I just used, I'm going to mix these two together. These like more glittery shades, which I definitely will be using, remind me a lot of the LA Girl eyeshadow palettes, the pressed pigments that come in that. I think using that cream was the best decision I made. These shadows are just sticking. This is why I always say I do not like to set my eyeshadow primer because I mean, it's pretty much the same concept that we have right here. When you leave yourself a like semi-wet sticky base, your shadows are just going to suck onto that like a magnet. Now, are you going to have to do a little bit more blending? Yes. I'm going to slowly start to blend this out. I'm just gonna take this color and I'm just gonna start to do circular motions to help start to blow the edges of this out. Blending out very easily. Just to solidify all the hard work we just put in, I'm just gonna take a clean fluffy brush and just blend in circles. I don't know if this color is going to show up the way that I want it to, but I wanna go ahead and just take that on the outer crease and just pack that on there to give a little bit more dimension on the outside. 
a very nice true brown color and i'm just really doing that on the outside to help deepen it up a bit slowly do some circular motions i'm just going to take another clean brush because i don't want a whole bunch of excess color on the outside alternating between a stippling motion and a circular motion we're not even going to be subtle today i am going straight for this one right here shades like this just call my name finger on one eye brush on the other. I'm going to start in the center and we may leave it as a halo, but half the time I end up putting it all over the lid. We're putting it all over. I know some people just like more smooth glitters. I like the chunky glitters. I think they give another dimension that smooth glitters aren't able to. They look so foiled and pretty. Most of the time with these more chunky glitters, I found that my finger is just more efficient and looks better but this could be that one in a million that isn't that way and i just sprayed my brush with some setting spray Ooh, almost feel like this eye looks better than that eye i do like using a brush because you're able to be a lot more precise with your placement small blending brush and just slightly blend out the edge 10 out of freaking 10. Love, love the matte formulas. They are so pigmented, but they're very buildable and blendable. And these creams, I really, really am glad that I used these because I feel like it just made the matte eyeshadows job even easier because it gave it something nice and sticky to stick onto, but also gave that extra pigment. I do have a new eyeliner, but before we do eyeliner, I went ahead and popped on some of my infamous e.l.f. line and define eye tapes. This is a eyeliner from the Sephora collection. I have tried the liquid eyeliner and that is very good. I like it. I tried the brown formula in my last video and I don't know, it just wasn't the same as the black. They do offer a couple different types of liquid liners. We're gonna try another one today. I thought that this was black, but it's brown. So we're really just going for it. Sephora collection, colorful Wink It liner in the color Cup of Joe. I don't know why I thought the name Cup of Joe would be black first impressions I like this one a lot more I went ahead and just swatched it on my hand that way you guys can see what the true color is it's showing up but because it's brown it's gonna have a harder time showing up because it's not black not because the formula is not good I hope that makes sense take that off it kind of almost looks more like smoky liner because it is fading into the shadow a little bit. Now it is time for the face, which is my favorite. We've got this huge pimple over here, so we, we got to cover her up. First, we're going to start with primer mist, and my primer mist is actually going to double as my priming spray and my setting spray. I also have been hoarding in my collection for a little bit. This is the Haley's Refresh Ultimate Priming and Setting Spray. If you have not tried Haley's Beauty, you seriously should. I feel like you're missing out if you haven't. Not only is it an Austin brand, but it is a woman-owned brand and not only is she a woman but she is a woman chemist so she actually formulated all these products to be cruelty free fragrance free girl power to the max Ooh, it has a nice mister on it this smells exactly like another spray that i have but i can tell you which one it is kind of had deja vu for a second to me a spritzer can make or break a priming spray and a setting spray if you have a crappy spritzer i don't even want to use the product went ahead and primed my skin with a hydrating primer so now I'm gonna go in with a more mattifying primer and I have literally never heard anybody talk about this. It was like kind of tucked away in the drugstore department of the store. Neutrogena Matte Primer and Serum and it claims to have shine control and it also has rice protein in it. So this is supposed to double as a skincare product and a primer. I've never tried a serum that even claims to be mattifying. Nourish the skin but also prepares it for makeup application and it leaves a mattified finish that absorbs excess oil. Put this in my more oily areas. And I feel like because this is more water-based, I may have to let it actually dry down before I see any real mattifying, like really let it soak into the skin first. The forehead is always the biggest reveal. I feel like that bottle will last me forever because I really did not use a whole lot. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is like semi-burning. I do not put my mattifying primer all over because my cheeks are normal. They don't need it. Immediately, I'm not seeing any drastic change. It's more tacky than anything. These are the two foundations that I'm gonna be mixing. Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. And I have this in the color T130. This one I have literally probably had for almost a year. 
year. Sad confession, but it's true. I hide no secrets. Cover effects, custom cover drops, and I have this in the color G Deep 2. I'm actually a little tan right now because I still have my tan from when I went on spring break. It is going to be a little bit light, but I think I can darken it back up with some powder. I've already pre-mixed it to save a little bit of time. I almost forgot we also have a new beauty sponge, Eco Tools Bio Blender. It claims to be 100% biodegradable, and it has a little sticker on the back that says plant me, so that's awesome. I like the fact that you have a longer plate on this side and then a shorter one over here. Hopefully I can get, oh, that'll be perfect for right underneath the eyes. On this channel, when we test new foundations, we always do half sponge, half brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my sponge side first. Okay, that match isn't as bad as I thought. The thing that I hate when I have to mix foundations is that I can't tell is one carrying the weight for the other. Somebody is giving full coverage. It may be both of them that this is that. Stop. And I must say, I also really love this sponge. I have never tried anything from Eco Tools. Okay, well, that is super, super skin like. This combo that I have right now is reminding me of the combo that I get when I use the Derma Blend CC Cream and the Pat McGrath Foundation. I really don't put a whole bunch of foundation underneath my eyes, but that even got rid of my dark circles where I put it underneath. I've never tried anything from Bite Beauty. I actually only bought this because it was 30% off during the winter Sephora VIB sale. I'm not gonna use as much because I already know that this is full coverage with a sponge. So I'm guessing I'm gonna get more coverage with a brush. So I'm not gonna use as much at first. blend it out so seamlessly. So skin-like. It just looks a little bit more skin-like on the sponge side. The brush side does not look bad at all, but if I had to choose, that's what I would choose. Before I forget, because it never fails, I'm going to carve out the top of my brows. Just going to blend that out with my sponge. I'm going to keep it really short and sweet for you guys. 10 out of 10. When I tell y'all I am so excited to try these two concealers, I purposely put these two together. That way I can try them together because I've heard nothing but good things about both of these. Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer in the color 18. This is not new, but new to me. ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer, and I have this in the color Medium Dark 145W. I have not tried a foundation from Anastasia, but I have tried the Liquid Foundation and the Powder Foundation from the Pretty Fresh line. They are both immaculate. I also purposely chose these two to pair together because I have been using two concealers. I'll use one that is more my skin tone, and then I will use one on top of it that is a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go in with this one. One first. This is a very interesting applicator. It's like kind of curved at the top. Creamy formula. I'm going to do one eye with a sponge, one eye with a brush. I'm going to go in with this smaller side for the sponge side. I really like this sponge. I'm telling you guys, there are very few feelings that compare to finding good makeup products. Yeah, she is giving everything that I expected her to. I'm gonna go in with a brush. Am I crazy or does this brush side look a little bit more dried down than the sponge side? Look, I swear, neither of these are really like accentuating my fine lines underneath my eyes. I do have a lot. If I sit here for a little bit, the concealer will settle into those. Easy fix is just to blend that out. Just make sure you blend it out before you set it because if not, you're gonna set it like that. I understand the hype. What I like about this is the fact that A, you get so much product. The Dofa applicator is huge, which I am such a big fan of. I love when concealers can have full coverage and be lightweight. Like that formula was so milky and buttery. It was not thick. I don't mind thick concealer because I've just gotten used to it, but I know that some people don't like that. So I feel like if you're that person, you should give this a try. I'm just gonna go in with this concealer just on the very insides of my eye, just right there. Because I mean, I really don't do this for coverage. I do this part to brighten. And for this, I like to use a sponge. Those just both blended into the skin and made me look like I have gotten 
a million years of sleep. I will say the ColourPop Pretty Fresh is a little bit thicker in formula. I went ahead and just popped on a little bit of cream blush. Now I'm going to go ahead and set underneath the eyes. And I've also never heard anybody talk about this. I am very, very surprised. To set underneath the eyes, I'm going to be using the Tarte Shape Tape Setting Powder. And this is just in translucent. I'm thinking that people either A, don't talk about this because it must not be very good because the, sh the Shape Tape is so good. Or B, they don't know what they're missing. I guess we're going to find out. I so love the sponge. Like this little part is so perfect for underneath the eye. And let me just say that right there is magical. Not only is it actually colorless, but that just makes me look like I have a filter on my face. How come none of y'all have told me about this? This is so good. To say the least guys, I am feeling the makeup today. There's nothing wrong with putting pressed powder underneath your eyes. Half the time I do it when I'm doing no makeup makeup because it's just faster. But when you set your under eyes with a loose powder and a sponge, it just allows that loose powder to just soak into your skin and filter it and smoothen those pores and all that texture. Like it doesn't even exist. Like texture who? That is stunning. I have this powder foundation from Bite Beauty, but I think it's a little bit too light. So we're gonna have to use something else. I went through my stash of makeup that I haven't tried yet. And I think that this powder foundation is going to be perfect. I've never tried anything from this brand also. This is from Ulta. This is a black owned drugstore brand, black opal oil absorbing pressed powder. And this is in the color Caramel Crush. Since it claims to be oil absorbing, I wonder if it would be a good touch up powder because not all colored powders are good touch up powders. Some of them are just a little bit too cakey. getting me back to the perfect color that I wanted. It's giving just a little bit of coverage, but it also is doing a little bit of smoothing. I always go in with a smaller brush right around my brows. I'm doing something that I literally never do, but when I saw this product, I was like, mm, add to cart. Fenty Beauty Sunstalker Face and Eye Bronzer Highlighter Palette triples as a highlighting palette, an eyeshadow palette, and a bronzing palette, which to me, that concept is just very, very cool. Gonna be mixing these two as my bronzing colors. I really prefer cream, guys. I really do, but I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm also gonna use this as an eyeshadow palette because I feel like it's really awesome. You have transition shades, which are my favorite thing of all time, and then some shimmers up here to make it really easy. Mix these two down here. That dark color, has a little bit too much of a red undertone for me. I like something that's a little bit more neutral. I'm not getting a whole bunch of kickback in the pan. It's very easy to blend out. I have tried the powder bronzer from Fenty and the reason I don't like it is because the color that I had was just way too red. I think it was Mocha Mommy that I had, but I definitely think that I like this better. Very, very blendable. Guys, this is big. What is happening? Is it a new year? Why is everything so good? You'd think that I would expect everything to be great, but I don't. I've just been let down too many times. That is so smooth on the cheeks. It's not patchy. If you guys have watched my videos before, I literally make it a point to say that I do not like powder bronzer. I like cream because I think cream is a lot more beginner friendly and user friendly. It's a lot easier to tone down, but that was honestly probably the easiest application of powder bronzer that I've ever had. Unfortunately, I held onto this for so long that this brand is actually about to go out of business, but I feel like I still have to use this. BH Cosmetics Weekend Vibes Bellini Six Color Blush Palette. I don't know when they're going out of business. I know it's a definite thing. It could be like a year from now. It could be six months from now. Let's see. One thing I will miss is their brushes. What I like about them is that some of their shapes are unique and I've never seen some of their shapes from other brands. I can't stop looking at my cheek because that bronze is just going to each one of the colors. Like, I don't know. We're just going to go into all of them. Definitely more pinky. I'm more of like a brown blush type of girl, but I will do a good pink every once in a while. Definitely getting the pigment. The higher up you put your blush, the more of a facelift you're going to give yourself. All right, we're gonna give her like an eight and a half out of 10. Before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and set my face. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the eyes and I do have some new eye pencils. I swatched these in the store and they are beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and open all these because I do wanna swatch them all for you guys. Sephora Collection 12 hour colorful contour eye pencils. These are so 
creamy starting with the white one going this way coconut cocoa and tiramisu i feel like today because we do have a little bit of like a reddish undertone in the eye i'm gonna go ahead and use cocoa i was so surprised at how creamy these were because i found that pencils are a lot more dry than a roll-up formula is and these feel like a roll-up formula clean brush to pull because i really want to tight line this and then decide if i want to smoke it out it just like darkens the eye and brings out the whites in your eyes it's not tugging or pulling at my eyes which is something that's really important to me because your eye area is super super sensitive skin around your eyes is the most delicate i need you to understand what this is doing for me right now stop use this color to do my nose my cheeks and my inner corner We have two new lip products that are both from the drugstore. This first one, usually not what I go for. I swatched this in the store and the formula was very impressive. Morphe colored pencil and I have this in the color Bite Me. So I feel like this would go perfect with the look for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips. These lipsticks are one of my first true love. Juvia's Place Nude Chocolates Collection, and this is their Velvety Matte Lipstick in the color Toffee. They have one of my favorite matte lip formulas because it is so buttery and smooth. It's not going to dry your lips out. All right, guys, this is the completed look. I think that it's just gonna be easier for me to talk about the things that give like a B, C average. First, this Haley's Beauty Refresh Ultimate Priming and Setting Spray, it's okay. It's not anything amazing, but I will say that this is consistently one of my favorite brands. Neutrogena Matte Primer and Serum Shine Control. Now I'm throwing things. This did not mattify me, especially on my forehead. I even let it soak in for a little bit and it still wasn't giving. It wasn't bad, but it just didn't do what it said it was gonna do. The BH Bellini palette, she's cute. Eight and a half out of 10. Come up on darker skin tones. I don't know how I feel about this. I wanna give this eyeliner an eight and a half, nine out of 10. It's not like a 10 out of 10 because I just don't know how I feel about brown lighter yet. That is it for today's video. I seriously think I have found some new favorites today. If you guys love these videos, lucky for you, I have a whole playlist filled with them that I will link right up here for you guys where you can watch me do this over and over and over again. Sometimes it turns out like this where I like it. Sometimes I wanna cry. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these products. Let me know if any of them are on your wish list down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.